So according to Bhagavad Gita, the rasic quality bones out of the greed, right? And the fundamental body of the rasic quality is that this state when we are all about our selfish desire, right? When we are in that state, that state itself creates this whole rasic uh, quality. And in the and in this uh, video, we'll take a look at the entire picture of the rasic quality. What Bhagavad Gita says, what Krishna says about how does the whole spectrum of the rasic quality looks like? How does the rasic quality manifest itself in a different dimension of our life? Yeah. So the Krishna says that uh, first the rasic doer, the rasic personality. So when somebody is in that state, so in the rasic doer state, the person has a very strong attachment and ego. And he is very strongly attached to the fruit of the action. Right? So let's say if somebody wants to be wealthy, right? And it's a completely selfish desire. And he's very strongly attached to that, uh, that dream or whatever it is that I want to be wealthy, right? And his ego is involved in that. That means like if he succeed in that goal, he's going to feel elated. If he is not, if he's failing, then he's going to feel loser, right? Again, this is not something just because somebody desire that he's want to be wealthy, that he becomes wealthy, right? This, this is like a, you know, the system itself is a very complex. He's not the only agent. He's not the only cause for that. There's a lot of thing going on, right? There's different laws that is going on in terms of the nature, in the terms of the social uh, society. And there's many, many, many different things are going on. And he's just one actor in that complex system. So yes, he can become wealthy or not become wealthy. But just because he's attached to it does not, you know, guarantee that he's going to become wealthy or not wealthy, right? It's being decided by different, different factors, right? So the, the, the rasic person is very much, very strongly attached to his desires, right? He is not holding them lightly. He's very strongly attached to the desire. And when somebody is very strongly attached to the desire and the desire is born out of greed, he is going to do things like um, impure things, what Krishna says. He's going to do impure things. He's going to become violent. He doesn't care what other people, you know, if he is harming and hurting other people, he doesn't care whether he's compromising his own integrity and he's doing things that is not wholesome. But he'll do it if this, you know, selfish desire is very strong and if his ego is attached to it. And then Krishna says this person is very disturbed in the happiness and happiness, right? When things are going his way, he feels elated. When the things is not going his way, he's feeling depressed or anxious or stressful, right? And you will see generally a rasic person always uh, very stressful about, you know, life, like uh, very, very serious and stressful about the life. And for example, we can see a lot of celebrities, right? A lot of celebrities have what generally people want. A lot of fame, a lot of wealth and all these kind of stuff. And you notice every now and then, not all the celebrity, but you notice every now and then there is a news like a celebrity did suicide, right? How come that is possible? They have all the things externally that is required to live a very good life, right? So how come they are doing suicide, right? Because, th because in that process, in this process of rasic, because this is such a competitive field that somebody who wants to be really, you know, become celebrity or something like that, they are doing things which are, you know, not so wholesome inside themselves. Not all of them, again, some of them, the people who are doing things which are unwholesome in their nature, some unwholesome activities in terms of their own integrity and some unwholesome activity in terms of, you know, in com competition, destroying, being this crafty person, you know, all these kind of things, when people do these things, they create this internal, uh, you know, state inside themselves, which is very disharmonious, right? And which is very stressful, very unhappy. And that kind of a state even leads to the point of suicide and all that, right? So this is very important to understand. It's not just like what you are achieving, but it's also the how you are achieving that, right? If your intent is more rasic in the nature, it is going to create suffering internally, right? Externally, you will have externally you might have all the materials and everything but internally it is going to become chaos right that is such that is the nature of the rasic quality so that is the rasic doer <laughs> a little bit intense that is the rasic doer uh, then he says rasic determination right so the rasic determination is again comes out of the fruit of the desire uh, desire for the fruit of the action right so rasic determination is like that so the entire rasic band is what Bhagavad Gita is trying to, it's opposite of what Bhagavad Gita is trying to teach. The whole point of Bhagavad Gita in terms of the uh, karma or in terms of the karma yoga is basically teaching that you have to let go of the fruit of the action, right? In the rasic quality, you are very strongly attached to the fruit of the action. It's just opposite of what Bhagavad Gita is teaching basically. 
right? So here the Krishna says the determination of the rasic person is coming from the fruit of the action, is attachment to the fruit of the action. And we can see that in our life also, right? When we are attached to the fruit of the action, right? That I want to get that, that creates a determination inside ourselves, right? That determination may not be wholesome, but it creates a determination inside ourselves. And the Krishna says, this kind of a determination generally comes either for the desire for wealth or either for the desire for, you know, some kind of enjoyment of the senses, right? So that kind of a desire, that kind of a determination is a rasic in the nature. Then he says rasic intelligence. So here, here Krishna says the rasic intelligence cannot very clearly distinguish between dharma and adharma. What to be done, what not to be done, right? And that is what creates the problem for the rasic person because he cannot see what is the, what is to be, what is the dharma and what is the dharma? Basically, what are the laws of the nature and what are what he should be stay away from it, right? There are different laws of the nature. For example, interdependence, right? Every person in the one way or another has to bring value in the system we are living, right? And that is just the law of the nature. One way, another one, you can do the business, you can do the job, whatever you do, but you have to bring the value for your survival, right? You cannot bypass it. That is just the law. Of, that is just how things work here, right? Again, there are a lot of psychological law, right? Based on what is your intent, how the fruit comes out, right? Based on if your intent is pure, how does your internal state becomes? When your intent is impure, what happens inside yourself, right? How do you become, you know, depressed and how you become anxious and all these things? These are based, these are working based on certain laws of cause and effect, right? And these laws can be psychological. So if these things are not clear, if it is not clear to me what happens when I'm when my intent is impure and when I act what happens to what happens inside myself and these things are not clear to me if these dharmas are not clear to me uh, then I end up doing things which are harmful for myself <laughs> which are harmful for myself right I can end up doing those things so the rustic person these dharmas and adharmas are not very clear so he doesn't really clearly understand that what exactly to be done and what exactly not to be done what should be avoided right so that is the rustic intelligence Rasic understanding. So in terms of the Rasic understanding, the person's understanding is uh, there's a different beings in the different, uh, there's a different entity in the different being, right? For example, I'm the one who's creating the video and another person who's one watching the video, right? So my understanding is there's the another person is a completely different entity. I am completely different entity, right? Isolated entities, silos, right? So there's another person, here's the another person. There's no connection between that and these two, right? Such is the understanding of the rasic person, mostly understanding of all of us, but this is how rasic person sees. Here's another person, here I am, I have certain desire, so how can I use this person to fulfill that desire, right? That's the understanding of the rasic person. So that's how uh, it works for the rasic person. Then the rasic action, again, it is very much originated from the fruit of the action. He just want to get the fruit of his action, right? He just, he has certain selfish desire, self-oriented desire, and he want to get to that desire. So he'll do whatever it requires to do that to get there, right? These are kind of rustic actions. And it is it involves a very intense effort, right? It, the rustic person is willing to do a lot of effort. And he's willing to go through a lot of stress to get what he wants, right? So that is the rustic action, rustic happiness. So rustic happiness is what Krishna says. It come, it bones out of the contact, uh, it bones out of, out of the contact of the senses, right? And in the beginning, it tastes like a nectar, but in, in, in the end, it becomes like a poison. That is the rustic happiness. Born, born out of the contact of the senses, right? Any senses. It can be some, you can have it like um, a taste, from taste to sexual misconduct, whatever you want to put it. But anything with the sense contact, it gives you a pleasure, right? It gives even just like having a junk food gives you the pleasure. Chips, right? Having a chips gives you the pleasure of certain kind, right? It gives you a pleasurable feeling. That pleasure is the rustic happiness, right? And uh, uh, in the beginning, it tastes like a nectar. In the beginning, you are enjoying the this this pleasure that comes out of the sense contact. But uh, later, it becomes like a poison. How does it become like a poison, right? For example, there are certain laws of the nature again. There are certain laws of the psychology. You taste something which is out of the sense pleasure, right? There's a pleasure, and there is an unconscious process which is you know getting attached to that pleasure. Now, what is happening is while before you eat it your mind was kind of a peaceful and you were just you know having fun with your life or whatever but now you tasted it and you liked it now your mind start creating craving right so it becomes restless 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 if you start doing more and more of these things 
before you know your natural state of mind becomes very chaotic and very you know uh, disturbing so that becomes like a poison in the end right you had a small you know uh, taste in the beginning a pleasure in the beginning but later you are dealing with this completely restless and you know disturbed mind that is more like a result of that so that is the sat- uh, rasik happiness then the rasik food so the rasik person like uh, you know bitter pungent hot spicy dry that sort of a food that is the kind of a food for rasik person like and the krishna says it leads to disease suffering and depression that kind of food an example can be <laughs> coffee right that it's hot it's stimulating it's uh, bitter that kind of a food right so <laughs> not a very nice uh, example maybe but it is true right the coffee in itself is a very rasik food so that kind of a food is the rasik food yeah rasik dana the kind of a dana so the rasik person doesn't want to do any kind of dana right he may do the dana or he may give the charity and the uh, donation for self glorification right for his reputation and all that but he have no intent of giving any dana he have no intent of you know anybody else's well being and he just doesn't want to do it right but maybe just for the glorification or something he might do it so that is the rasik dana and finally the rasik austerity right again the austerity of the body mind and speech the rasik person can be very intense there's no doubt about it right that energy itself is a very intense so rasik person can hold on to things so rasik person can be very austerity right it can be very he can work 120 hours per week that kind of austerity but that austerity is for the pride and the ego right it it may come out of the competition like i am the hardest worker ever or something like that so it it is more coming out of this ego and the pride and it could be uh, and it again it come out of it comes out of this uh, desire for the fruit of the action right so that kind of austerity is the rasik austerity and these are the nine different aspect krishna ex- explains how the rasik uh, you know quality manifest in the, in these different aspects and of course we all have all these three qualities satvik rasik and tamasik and in different uh, times some some quality is more dominant than other that's given but if we understand it right if we can uh, clearly see the entire picture right because there are some part of the rasik quality which are very pleasant right which are very uh, stimulating and that part we have to understand with that comes a lot of baggage also right it's not just the singular a small band of pleasure that we are getting we are getting this entire baggage with it right so just with the proper understanding we can make a wiser choice right that we can choose what we can choose how much we want to engage in which kind of quality